What if every NBA team's best duo was put onto the current roster? Well, today we're going to find out because that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking the best duo of all time for each NBA team, putting them right onto the team that they're currently on or the current roster. And no, nobody's leaving the roster. We're not getting rid of, like, for example, the Sixers. They don't lose Joel Embiid. They still have Joel Embiid with this whole duo type of thing here. So here you guys go. This is the first team right here. We're going to go with Moses Malone and Dr. J. And I want to say I went through like an article for this. Uh, there was like one or two that like I did myself and I changed up but when it comes to the, the all of them there was an article there's a few decisions that were tough as well that I had to kind of make in a way but Dr. J and Moses Malone that's the best duo from the Sixers I don't really think there's gonna be any kind of controversy with that now Joel Embiid has another big man to play with I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or not because Joel Embiid can kind of space the floor but not really the best in the world at doing that and now we go over to the Bucks. The Bucks got the three, the three best players in their franchise history, and Dame might even become the fourth best player in franchise history, depending on how his career goes. So they, they got an insane like big four right here. That, that's that's insane. They still got Chris Middleton as well, and Brook Lopez. So this is one of the better teams in the league, in my opinion. You got Kareem out here, and now you got the Bulls. You guys already know how the Bulls are. Which Scottie Pippen, I made him a 95 overall. Is that true or is it not? I think it, I think it was a 97. I think that's what it is, 97 overall. So either 95 or 97 back in the day, but we're gonna make him 97. MJ and Scottie Pippen on the team now with Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan and all of them. I'm thinking about doing a DeMar DeRozan like kind of video around him, but I don't think people really care about that to be honest with you. And then uh, Cavaliers, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. Apparently he's 18 years old. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got Kyrie and LeBron now on top of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. They have a million guards, but they still got, you know, their big men, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley and all them. Go over to the Celtics here. You got Bill Russell, which I don't know why he's not a 99 overall. There we go. And they got Bob Cousy, literally the best two players of all time on their all-time roster. Now they got Jason Tatum still. They got the OP roster. So this is one of the better teams in the league as well. Now we go over to the Clippers. They got Kawhi, but they added Chris Paul and Blake Griffin to the team as well. So prime Chris Paul. I don't know if you want to really consider it prime Chris Paul. Uh, it depends on what you guys think. But you got prime Chris Paul, prime Blake Griffin. Still got James Harden, Paul George. This is like an all right team. I think this is more of an all around team. They don't have like top heavy. They kind of like all around, just like how it kind of became in real life a little bit. And then the Grizzlies. I miss this team. I say this every single time, but Marcus Saul, Mike Conley. I could have put Zebo in here, uh, but they were the same overall as Mike Conley. And the website said Mike Conley. And I was like, that makes sense. I don't really want like two big men. They already got Jaron Jackson Jr. So, you know, I don't really need a power forward. So I was like, you know, a center works. We need a center and a point guard. I guess you could say we don't need a point guard either. So it was between Jaron Jackson and John Morant. But uh, I don't know. I feel like Mike Conley would help out a decent amount. And then we got the Hawks over here. Bob Pettit and Cliff Hagen. I, I just what you know they played back in the day that's all i really gotta say about them and then you got the miami heat with lebron once again making another appearance there are three lebrons yeah three lebrons in this because you got the Cavs lebron the heat lebron and the current lakers lebron is still there so you got three different lebrons in this which is funny Dwayne wade here making his only appearance on top of jimmy butler which he's super high rated obviously for a good reason and then you got bam you got tyler hero so this team i feel like is one of the better teams as well especially because 2k always likes to like go crazy for, for the heat and things like they're the best team in the league or something the hornets alonzo morning larry johnson they kind of suck i'm gonna be honest they, they're really bad they're not that great <laughs> um the very great players back in the day but obviously let me just get these overalls a little bit right here boop there we go 94 90 or 93 92 a little bit of a boost but this that team's definitely gonna be one of the worst teams in the league for sure then you go to the jazz we got one person we can't really talk about, but we'll talk about him for this video. It's a rare exception. Carl Malone, um, bad person. NBA for some reason celebrates him as a person. Celebrate his game, not his person. Anyway, John Stockton's here as well. With John Stockton, you know he's he's all time great. So that team actually could be decent. It's just they don't really have anybody around him, around them. I mean, uh, and then you got Chris Webber. You got Peja, which I might have, I was gonna put Mike Bibby, or I was gonna put in uh, Divash. Like any of them really could have worked honestly, but Chris Webber definitely had to be there. I'm gonna put someone else. I don't really know who else to put there. But overall, this team is probably going to be like at the end of the playoffs, like probably like in the playing tournament. And then the Knicks, Walt Frazier and Willis Reed. This is kind of a boring pick, but definitely could help them out. Uh, Willis Reed and uh, Walt Frazier are both just like great players and like that. They're going to lock people up in the paint and everything. Or well, Walt Frazier's not going to lock people in the paint, but you guys know what I mean. They're going to lock people up. Now, Lakers got Magic and Kareem. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Kobe and Shaq are the best duo. And like, I'm not going to sit here and say no to that. First of all, Magic should be a 99. I'm not going to say no. You could literally go either way. I'm going to be honest. Kobe and Shaq or Kareem and Magic. The only reason why I feel like they put Kareem and Magic because they won more championships together, right? They won four. Then they literally won four championships together. I think they did win four championships together. Um, or was it? Yeah, it was four championships together. Or it might have been five championships together, actually. I think, yeah, it was five champions together, right? Because 
Doesn't, uh, does Kareem have six rings? I don't even, yeah, Kareem has six rings. He had a ring without them. So they won five rings versus, you know, three rings of Kobe and Shaq. So I think that's why uh, it's pretty close, I would say. Like, obviously, uh, they are both great players, or both duos, I mean. Uh, but now you got LeBron on this team as well. Then you got Magic, which the Magic actually have Penny Hardaway higher overall than Shaq, which is interesting to me. Uh, but you got Penny and Shaq here. The only other duo you really could have tried to say was like, I don't even know, bro, because like you can't even say T-Mac and Grant Hill. You can't say anybody with Dwight Howard. So this is really the only one right here. And then we go over to the Mavericks here. You got Dirk and Steve Nash. Which, when you think about it, they didn't really have any duos, so Dirk and Steve Nash definitely up there. And I made Steve Nash to 87 overall because he wasn't in his prime back in the day. He was like a good late 80s overall always on this team when I saw him. Uh, so now they got Dirk in their prime as well. So they got Luka and Dirk, which actually played a season together in real life, which was always cool. I remember that. Uh, the Nets got Jason Kidd in his pure prime and Vince Carter like kind of close to his prime. Um, I don't think he should be. I think he should be more like a 91, though. That's a little bit close to what he was rated in this like era. And then you go to the Nuggets. You go look at the Nuggets, they got obviously Jokic in the league, but they got Alex English and Kiki. Uh, I, I don't really know much about this duo, I just know Alex English was a great scorer, kind of like underrated uh, in that aspect. Kiki I don't really know much about besides in 2k he could shoot pretty much uh, <laughs> on his uh, My Team cards. The Pacers, they said that this was Rick Smiths and uh, Reggie Miller, and I was like, yeah, I, I believe that, I believe that for sure. I just, there's no Reggie Miller in 2k, and yeah, I could have got a custom one, but Rick Smiths I literally know nothing about besides seeing him on 2k. Uh, and like and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, you know, Paul George and Roy Hibbert, you know, mm, I, people might be mad, but Paul George, Roy Hibbert, <laughs> I put them there instead. Uh, now Pelicans, Chris Paul and David West here. Chris Paul, I guess you could say he was in his prime at this point, right? Because, uh, you know, he was able to dunk back in the down. They didn't even give him a dunk, which we're going to give him a dunk. We're going to respect his dunk, bro, because he used to dunk back in the day, if you guys remember. So we're going to give him like a like a 60 dunk, bro. Chris Paul used to be dunking, if you guys didn't know, bro. He really used to be dunking. And uh, he ended up like getting those injuries that he always has, like those hamstring injuries and stuff, and then he just stopped dunking. So that's what happened by the time he got to the Clippers. Then the Pistons. You got Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars, the best two players on their all-time roster right here. Uh, and then we go over to Kyle Lowry, DeMar Rose. You could say like Vince Carter and T-Mac. Uh, just for like iconic wise, but like they weren't really a duo team that kind of dipped pretty quickly. Vince Carter was chilling. Uh, but the Marta Rose and Kyle Lowry, if you were to ask yourself like what is the most iconic duo or the best duo on the Raptors, you're immediately going to think of Kyle Lowry and the Rose and like there's no way around that. Then the Rockets, Hakeem and Clyde Drexler. I mean, is that even a question? Now, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker. Wait, yeah. Oh, you could have said uh, Hakeem and Ralph Sampson, by the way, but I was like, no, no, no. Uh, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker. You could argue that Tim Duncan and David Robinson were a better duo, but they only won, what, two championships together, I think it was? So, you know, this Tony Parker, he was here for all but one, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, and Tony Parker was lasted longer, you know, on the team with them. Uh, so there you go. And then now Wemby's on the team as well. And then the Suns, they still have Kevin Durant, but now they got Steve Nash and Amare Stoudemire. So they kind of filled out their roster there. It uh, looks like they actually have a point guard for real now. Uh, and Bradley Beal is probably coming off the bench. Then the Thunder. You could say for this that because they were CL Supersonics at one point that uh, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp. Now, I was kind of thinking this by myself. I was sitting here going back and forth like, do I want to put Sean Kemp and Gary Payton onto this team or do I want to put Kevin Durant or Russell Westbrook on this team? And I was like, it is the Thunder technically, but honestly, the Sonics, they're, they're more iconic back. They've been around longer. Uh, honestly, it's, it's either one. You can go either one. I just feel like Kevin Durant is a better player than Gary Payton all the time. And then Russell Westbrook's kind of similar to Sean Kemp all time or better all time, but around the same range. So I was like, you know what? We'll just put Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook. And then Timberwolves, Kevin Garnett and Wally Serbiak. I was going to put Sam Cassell here, but I wasn't really sure. I just kind of went off the list here for Wally. I, I just kind of trusted them on that one, trusted the source. Trailblazers, Blazers, Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter. No really question about that. The Warriors, they said it was Stephen Clay, which I agree. So we kept Stephen Clay, obviously. Um, kept them on the current roster which I, i'm gonna put clay in his prime his prime was like what he was like a 90 or 92 i think it was a 92 overall back in his prime and then curry was a 99 so we'll put them in their prime but then we ended up adding chris paul or not chris paul chris mullen and tim hardaway uh, mitch richmond wasn't on the all-time team or unless i was tripping and missed him but you know we put you know some of the run the tmc 
put some of them in there, not all three of them. Uh, and now the final team. I was gonna put the the Supersonics team on here, but I was like, I can't disrespect Elvin Hayes and Wes Unseld. There you guys go. That's all the rosters right there. We're gonna go ahead and simulate. Injuries are off. This is what the starting lineup is for the Sixers, if you guys were wondering. Let's go ahead and simulate this whole season, see who wins the championship and that kind of stuff. I know this is like a super long intro, but that's how it is for these type of videos. And here we go, LeBron James on the Heat version right here, win the MVP, go over to the Rookie of the Year, Sixth Man of the Year, and David West. Okay, so that was different. I was expecting to see Chris Paul here, but we got David West. And then we go over to Bill Russell for Defensive the Player of the Year. Ooh, okay. Michael Jordan, Most Improved Player. I guess we've got the rookie version of him. And then Stephen Curry, Clutch Player of the Year. Nick Nurse. So apparently the Sixers, which were the team I was using, are the best team in the league, which is crazy. Uh, Jacob Park, Celtics up there as well. LeBron James, Dirk, Karl Malone, LeBron James on the Cavs version, and Magic. So all new players have made the first NBA team. Second team, you got Jokic making it, the only current player that actually made it. And then the third team, you got, let's see, LeBron, Lakers LeBron making it. That's the only, the only two real players made the first three NBA teams. That's crazy. Let's go look at the standings real quick. I kind of just saw a playoff picture there, but the Sixers were the best team in the league by far. That is insane, bro. They are by far the best team in the league with no question at all you got the celtics right behind them though it looks like the east was better than the west i mean we all already knew the celtics were gonna be doing good i didn't expect the sixers to do that good though that's interesting that really is interesting i mean i guess they got a huge trio kind of just chilling there um and then you got the celtics you got who missed the playoffs i want to see if my some of my predictions were right so you got the pistons the pistons ended up being the worst team in the league right yeah tied for the worst team in the league Surprises me, but I think they are pretty bad already. The Raptors makes sense. Hornets makes sense. Pacers makes sense. Nets makes kind of sense. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. And then the Cavaliers. That doesn't really make much sense to me because they're already good in 2K. But then you add on the fact that you got you know a few extra players on them. No, yeah, LeBron. You know, you get all those players. The Magic did pretty good. The Wizards, like that, surprises me. That they, I thought they were gonna be the worst team. The Spurs are also tied for the worst team, which Tim Duncan and Tony Parker, which somewhat understandable. But I feel like they should have did a little bit better. I feel like they should have made at least made the play-in tournament. You got the Rockets. I don't really. I guess I understand that a little bit. Uh, then the Kings. I understand the Nuggets. How did they miss the playoffs? Can somebody explain that to me? I understand they didn't get any like crazy additions or anything. They got like two like modest additions in this situation, but no, bro, that's crazy. Let's go ahead and simulate the playoffs though. Let's to play in over with. Let's simulate the round and who makes it out of the first round. We got the Sixers versus Hawks, Celtics versus Bucks, Timberwolves versus Grizzlies, and Clippers versus Trailblazers. How did Clippers finish the fifth seed, by the way? That's crazy. Now the Clippers made it to the final or conference finals. I mean, let's simulate the last round here. And it's Celtics just lost. It was actually the best two teams in the conference or the league right here facing off in the seven game series. But the Clippers lost as well. So it's Sixers versus Timberwolves. So apparently the Sixers, the Sixers always win championships in the first season for some reason though. Then you got Wally Zerbiak and Kevin Garnett kind of carrying this team, which they got a million centers, bro. So then we simulate this and the Sixers end up winning the championship. We put all the best duos. Now, if you guys want to see similar videos to that, I think I'm going to put like, I put all the best, like one of the random positions, like I put all the best centers into the current team current roster somewhere on the screen make sure you guys click on it if you enjoyed this video